I wanted to speak about this sub subject a long time ago, since it since I found out about it, the Ferguson issue. I mean, it's been weeks. Been getting the same old, same old, and gradually things have started to change. But still, now is the perfect time for me to speak about it because I have something to say. Foolish men speak because they need to say something. Wise men speak because they have something to say. And that's the kind of mindset I'm operating under. But with the Trayvon issue that happened two years ago, it started off as a racial narrative, and that kept persisting. But whenever holes in the narrative started showing up, it always shifted to another narrative, a weaker narrative that has even more holes in it. And they wanted George Zimmerman to be this white guy that shot down a 12 year old boy, you know, an innocent 12 year old boy that was on his way to becoming the next president or some shit. That didn't make any sense. And the holes started showing up, and it became this thing about vigilante justice and gun control. And of course, that was too weak. The racial narrative is too strong for that shit. The racial narrative is always going to be stronger than the gun control narrative, or gun rights narrative. That's always going to be the case. It's never going to change because what sounds more interesting? A gun or the possibility of an aggressive conflict between blacks and whites? I mean, the internet is a very passive aggressive place because we've been trained to seek for pleasure and avoid pain at all costs. We've learned to say things that are going to get us likes, shares, follows, retweets, uh, subscribers. And we block people that trigger us on our news feed, on our walls, uh, on our dashboards, our subscription list. We want to avoid pain as much as possible pain of our egos being challenged and pain of our having to deal with conflict, having to deal with harsh words. That's what we want to avoid. And it's a problem. It's a problem and I don't know what the solution is. But with the Ferguson issue, this is even bigger now because now a kid named Michael Brown was shot up by a cop. And holes are slowly forming in the narrative. And the racial narrative is gradually switching from being what it is to a narrative on cops, the militarization of the police attacking its own people, some cyberpunk bullshit. And of course, people are speaking about it like it's actual cyberpunk. And it's now that the situation has cooled down, the writing has weakened, they're sending in glorified human resource people, human rights guys, Tumblr users with an actual future, basically, to have their signs, post pictures, start memes, become viral. And it's going to go back to being a racial narrative because the racial narrative, what they want to frame is ultimately that white privilege exists. And that blacks are not being exploited. They're just being... They have to go through difficulties that we will never understand. Critical theory. 
you could never understand what we have to deal with. No one understands us but us. That emo shit. I mean, the internet is emo as fuck. Girls are gonna bitch to guys because they'll never have to deal with periods, cramps, pregnancies, uh, the pain of pregnancy, actually. And all this other stuff. And they expect that you'll have no response to that, or that any response is going to be ridiculous, but again, critical theory, uncritical thing. This is a narrative that we constantly deal with. A narrative of two different cultures, species. People like, apparently can never understand one another. And we dehumanize each other because of it. Blacks are just weak and they can never protect themselves. They can never handle themselves unless someone yells out the N-word and then they're going to get fucked up. Every day could be their last. They have no hope. And whites, those are just evil people. They're just inhumane robots that only care about hurting people and they have godlike privileges despite their lack of empathy. All this kind of stuff. It's dehumanizing. It's. Can you even call it cultural Marxism? I don't even think that. We're, I think we're past that point, honestly. And the racial narrative is always going to win. It's always going to win over the gun control narrative. It's always going to win over the militarization of the police and police brutality narrative. It's always going to win over any narrative. Hell, we care more about Ferguson than we do about what's happening in the Middle East with ISIS, Israel, Palestine. It's crazy. But I'm done. Because I haven't really said anything that you don't already know. So fuck... The fuck happened to my body? This is Mr. Marcus 7. Suck my dick.